right, tonight on the show we have Mark Sargent. Uh, he is from Flat Earth Clues, and you guys have seen him all around the internet, and you might have seen him on Vice and some other uh, media outlets. So welcome on the show, Mark. How are you? I am fine, Robert. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. I've been very curious about this subject since I'd say, I guess it started popping up um, on YouTube, I guess maybe two years ago yep, or a year yep, and a half yep, ago. That'd be about right. The, I made the, made the clues at the beginning of 2015 and it really started picking up a head of steam uh, really around the beginning of 2016 when Neil deGrasse Tyson and the rapper B.O.B. went head to head. And right, then, right. And then Kyrie Irving, you know, a little mm -hmm. little known basketball player, sure, came out at the beginning of of twenty seventeen and said just before the All Star break, and that that was a year ago. The all the, you know the all new mm -hmm. All Star breaks coming up, and he's not backing down from it. It's great. He he went over. He jumped from Cleveland to Boston, and he initially was pretty quiet about it. But once he started winning games, he's like, "Yeah, you know what? I am flat Earth." And it's like good for you, man. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> well, hey, if you're gonna believe in something, you might as well go uh, both feet in. That's, that's yeah. Be, if you yeah, <laughs> go with your convictions. Don't shy away from it. I know it's easier said than done. Sure. Uh, well, let me ask you this: uh, what what made you first start to investigate it, or where did you? see it first that made that sparked your interest it was mostly a cocktail of different narcotics that got me into it <laughs> I, but I, I was switching i it was it was initially i had gotten off the meds from the from an institution and started buying street drugs uh, let, let's just call it what it is no that's not <laughs> no it was actually <laughs> what a such great story yeah it's, it's amazing you know they say don't mix drugs it's like no no do mix drugs it Absolutely. breaks down the barrier. It does. You, you, you never know. In fact, don't even really look at the drugs. Just, just it's like go, but kind of by feel. Okay, this pill feels like a little something. This feel, just kind of shake them up in a bag and then chase right. it with vodka. Uh, anyway, point, he's just kidding, kids. I am just kidding, kids. Hugs, not drugs. No, Drug the bad. um, what what initially got me into it was a conspiracy boredom, uh, and that that's I, I, it's a term I just came up with uh, a little while ago, which right. is. I had been in the conspiracy world long enough mm -hmm. to where everything kind of seemed old hat. Mm -hmm. And every, everybody in the conspiracy world knows about Flat Earth. In fact, it's not even a conspiracy. It's just this ridiculous notion. Remember, it's the book on the shelf you're never going to read. It's a DVD you got, you got for Christmas. You are never going to watch. And I just decided one day, it's like, all right, it's a piece of crap. I might as well take a look at it. You know, it, it, why not? Who, who? Everybody binge watches something after the first. You know, the first time they look at it is going. I am never watching that program. And like, like, I, like, believe it or not, I just finished off all five seasons of The Wire. Never saw it. You never saw it. Yeah, never I, saw I, The Wire. And I heard good things. It's it's rated in like the top <laughs> ten premium series of all time. And I sure. never watched it. I was like, ah, it's just not me. I mean, I'm I'm tired of crime shows. But right. you know what? After the third season, I was going, you know what? This is it is not a bad a show. It was ahead of its time. So I was I was anyway, so circle back around, flat earth, saw the videos and in that this is the summer of twenty fourteen, said, All right, I'm just gonna watch flat this. flat circle that is. Flat circle, yeah. Yeah. Well no, no, we call it flat earth. That's fine. I mean, you know, it just because yeah, but yeah, technically it's a circle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, no, no, wait, I'm sorry. Yeah, because circle is a two-dimensional object. Where is, where people say, well, no, the Earth is round, right? Sphere. Well, Sphere. well yeah, <laughs> round can also uh, uh, be identified with a two-dimensional object. <laughs> so we really say, no, it's not round. It's a sphere, it's a ball, it's a globe. It's one of those three things. Uh, a dinner plate is also round. A hubcap Spheroid. is also round. Spheroid, as Spheroid, they say. Spheroid, yeah, exactly, if you're Neil deGrasse Tyson. So middle of 2014, I looked at it and said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start looking at it. And I initially looked at some flight routes in the Southern Hemisphere done by a German guy. And then I mm. looked at Matt Boylan's videos. He was talking about how he worked for NASA or was tied to him in some way when he was growing up. And he was, he was doing photorealistic paintings for them. Mm -hmm. And then I said, okay, that's interesting. And so then I just started really kind of digging into it and trying to connect the dots. And what I really treated it as, like was a, a court case. And that was, okay, can I prove the globe in a court of law? Can I prove it? 
can I can I prove to myself? And add the the more I dug into it, the more I was having trouble. Where I was, there was loose ends popping up here and there. Mm-hmm. I was going, okay, why can I not nail this thing down? And I was stubborn. I, I consider myself a really great creative problem solver. I mean, that was what I was trained in, the you know troubleshooting software for for decades. Mm-hmm. And when after about nine months, uh, beginning of 2015, I gave up. I, and that's how most people do this. But, you know, nobody jumps into the flat earth saying, this is the greatest idea ever. Hey, honey, come over. Take a look at this. No, everybody hates it. And when in 2015... I, 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 I think some people are much more susceptible than others. Yeah, but it still takes a little while. I have yet... Now, the fastest, uh-huh. that being said, the, the women generally are, are more receptive than men. Uh, mm-hmm. In fact, the, the fastest case I ever heard of was a woman in... Uh, Southern California, actually in Los Angeles, who hmm. and I and I was firsthand. I was there when it happened. Uh, it, she was an Uber driver that was driving one of our members to a meetup in Pasadena, huh. and the in the thirty less than thirty minutes, the the time it took for that passenger to be picked up to the time she got to the meetup, she shut off her cab, said, "You know what? I'm in. i where is this meetup? I'm I'm going in." And I met her. She walked cool. right up to me. And and I and I go go and we're talking. I go, how long have you been in this? She goes, what time is it now? I was going, what? You gotta be kidding me. So anyway, nine months. I'm in it for nine months, and then I finally get into it, and uh, I finally flip, and I find I say, okay, I need help. I I literally it was really a cry for help, which doesn't sound as bad as it, in the initial phrase, but it was. It was like, okay, I don't think I can prove the globe anymore in a glo- in a court of law. Can anyone do this for me? So I, I made a series of videos called Flat Earth Clues. The first one was the introduction. And I put it on YouTube, put my name and my phone number and all my you know, real name, real address. And put it out there and said, okay, somebody shut this thing down. And I honestly thought for about the first four or five weeks that somebody might, that some professor was going to call or write me. You know, somebody, not necessarily MIT or Stanford or wherever, you know, the, the, the brilliant eggheads hang out. But somebody that, you know, has a master's degree in a physical science, and they didn't. They, mm-hmm. It was the exact opposite to where I was getting interviewed almost immediately, and, and people were calling me and leaving messages. I used to answer my phone back then. You know, that number still works. That phone's sitting next to me. I can't answer it anymore because people, I mean, the phone just doesn't stop ringing. And uh, then there were people, <laughs> we, we had a wave of people that called and started being subject matter experts to mm. where you know engineers uh, air traffic controllers all branches of the military pilots you name it air traffic controllers uh, you you name it I, I had a list of like i think there's 25 28 of them now and they were all calling nobody refuted no no one uh, retracted their testimonies nobody came out against them and it was just this this line of them it started out with the united states navy missile controller and they all said the same thing it's like oh yeah we've all heard of the the uh, the curvature of the earth and the coriolis effect uh, that the earth spins a thousand miles an hour we just don't use it in our everyday lives and that's really how the whole thing started started steamrolling for me and so now this is what i do <clears throat> interesting hmm. well does also let me ask you this i mean it seems like from what i've seen and read and um all the comments and stuff from the last couple of years of just going through YouTube videos and mm-hmm. checking it out and not, you know, wholeheartedly or anything, but just, just interesting. Just I, my interest in it is really why people believe why it's they, re- why it's resonating. Yeah. And, I, uh, but I, what it brings all seems to boil down to a, maybe 80% or 90% of uh, people that believe it seem to also um, be, um, Christians or believe in the Bible or it, it helps it's really tough to be an atheist and also be a flat earther and I fell away from the church for years I I was raised a strong born-again Christian up on a, a rural island north of Seattle you know went to youth group and vacation Bible school and, you know, church was not just a Sunday thing for, sure. for my family and friends and then when I got to college or as they call it university outside of the United States the uh, I, I I was opened up to a whole new world because there are no universities on this island. I mean, it really, sure. it's it's pretty rural. So it's like, wait, there's other religions. Wait, there's there's other things that are happening out there in the world. I, I had no idea. 
But when it comes to this, yeah, you're absolutely right. Because the underlying message to the flat earth is that you boil it, you want to boil it down in one sentence. Here it is. You've never been alone. Period. That's the underlying message. Now, it takes a while to get to that point. Because well, it also, sees, it also seems very egocentric. That means that we're the center of all things. We're the center of the universe. All things were made for us kind of thing. Is yeah, that... yeah, it, it can it can look like that. I mean, it makes, it's like some people said, well, now you uh, turn this world, you know, turn this universe from a, a vast, huge, empty expanse into a one-room apartment. And I said, yeah, but it's a very intimate and well done furnished well you know one room apartment and you don't have to worry about it you know now now you don't have to worry about getting wiped out by a black hole or a gamma ray burst or a rogue planet or nibiru <laughs> or in this crap you know it's it's not going anywhere and right. and maybe that's the maybe that's part of the, the comforting um, part of it well the comforting part it really really helps because a lot of people are are scared i mean one it it answers the 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 question that all of us have asked in our you know when we're sitting alone in the dark which is what's my purpose here why am i here mm -hmm. and it's like well you're here because you know for well at the very least i can't i can't necessarily say exactly why you're here because i'm sure that there's multiple facets to it but one of the things is, well, you, you're here f for a very deliberate reason. It's not an accident. And that alone will draw people in. Be sure. Because you're not this tiny little rock flying through space that absolutely was happenstance. You came out of nowhere, and you're probably going to get vaporized one day, and no one's going to tell you any different. I mean, honestly, if that was the truth, people should be scared to death right now. Yeah, we, 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 even NASA, even, even though NASA is completely fake, says that, oh, yeah, we're only mapping, you know, a small percentage of the sky, which means, well, it's, OK, so a rogue something could hit us at any point and just take this thing out. I mean, it, but anyway. Sure. So, yeah, the underlying good subtext is that you're not alone and that you never have been. Now, am I going to name God? No, of course not. I'm not I'm not that arrogant. But at the same time, at the very least, you're talking about a structure that is definitely not organic, which means it was created, which means somebody built it. Uh, is it the handprint of God on the wall? Mm, not necessarily, but since eight out of ten people in the world belong to one of the major religions, th they're going to look at it as such. And so, yeah, the, the religious community in tied to Flat Earth is significant, if not the majority. <laughs> Right. Even if you don't believe in religion, it rings kind of it kind of rings to the core of um, the human condition as a whole. You yeah. Know, you know. Absolutely, it does. We have, we're one of the animals on Earth that knows it's going to die. Yeah. Yeah. We there you go. And, and by the way, I, not, not to steal a, a line from the Matrix, but you, you know, I love I love the series. But the first one was, was so fantastic when. Agent Smith, he you know, he's talking about how every every other mammal on this planet develops a natural equilibrium, which is, with its surrounding environment, mm -hmm. and that's so true. What he should have said though was, except for humans, exactly, except for humans. the The point there is is that without, if you took humans off of this world, this world r runs perfectly, sure. absolutely, amazingly efficiently, sure. almost indefinitely, as a matter of fact, That's because, right. because all the other species seem to get along great. We're the only ones that, that create the added conflict. Of course, we're, there's things like the, right. tidal the, waves and volcanoes and earthquakes <laughs> and crap like that, but it's all manageable. The species survive, whereas we we tend to, we're the X factor that tends to, we, we put the lifespan, we put the expiration date on on things and sure so anyway sorry well i i can i completely agree with that that's for sure <laughs> um so yeah when another thing i kind of thought was well why do people believe this and i kind of look back and i think well people have lost confidence in um you know the government in a whole i have you know i've, I've always been a healthy skeptic of the government but you know after 9 11 and the invasion of iraq and everything just kind of falling apart it seemed um i think a lot of people lost faith they they have but there's also a, there's a secondary reason for that and i've been trying to and i i've only been focusing on on this recently because there have been the scientific community is finally 
finally starting to step up to the table because they've been asking the same thing. They're saying, you know, okay, why are people listening to this? You know, why are people doing this? And and to your point, it's like, yeah, of course, you know, if, if they uh, they don't trust, I know, I know what their answer is. Oh, gra 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 gravity, lack of education. Well, yeah, yeah, they'll they'll say, and I'm I've been I've been kind of shying away from saying that the dumbing down you know they'll say well we've dumbed down the general population so much that they'll believe anything you tell them it's again they'll they'll I, do not be surprised if they start referencing the movie uh, idiocracy which i didn't really like that much but i understood it because it sure. really wasn't that much of a stretch but no it's not <laughs> it isn't it is not that much of a stretch but i mean it is in a way i know that they've taken it too far but i'm looking at going sure. eh, not that far you know, there's it's there's some pretty. I mean, for God's sakes, we just we just elected. No offense, because I've never voted in my life, but we elected a reality television star as president of the United States, right. and the one they're talking about now, but the you know the one that's supposed to supplant him as of you know just a couple of weeks ago, uh, is uh, you know Oprah Win Oprah Oprah who oh, who yeah. um is going that's not, you know that's which, not gonna happen. yeah I know a talk show host. It's like if, yeah I, you know I would have said it wouldn't have happened either. But at the same same time, I'm going. Look, I watched Je Jesse the Body Ventura become governor. You know, Cl Clint Eastwood became mayor. Arnold Schwarzenegger almost they almost rewrote. I think it was the 42nd Amendment to allow him to become president. The only reason he wasn't on the ticket was because he wasn't a native-born sure. American. Sure. So, but anyway, sorry. But let me let me get to the back to the point, which is the reason the the big reason why and i i actually have a little great if i had we had a whiteboard i could draw this on a whiteboard for you the 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 big problem is that it's not that people have been dumbed down i mean yeah it, it, in some ways they have wow. but but other ways their priorities have really changed yeah. it's like yeah fine if i say eight inches per mile squared they're gonna they're just gonna glaze over and i know this because i've watched it happen way too many times i mean that's that's basic algebra don't even begin to get into geometry or trigonometry or anything like that right but it's, if i say eight inches per mile squared just crickets but if i say hey who's the best looking cast member on game of thrones right yeah there's always really like, jamie lannister it's jamie lannister you know and whoever the actor is that plays him they're and and how you know all the different apps that are on their phone and who is the biggest reality television star family that's out there and can you name them all oh you bet there's all sorts of people it's that their priorities have become entertainment media based I, well I, that's also i mean you can also just say well that's absolutely dumbing down the, the populace it, it, but is it i mean yeah it is from a scientific standpoint yeah. all your well, your general uh, uh well if you like you know you know yourself as a software engineer or a software designer yeah. that you need a little bit of math i mean there's you can you can use a whizzy wig or you know you, you do it, you do, but but but, but, but you here's make an iPhone. You gotta have a little. I bit know we yeah we've left the, the the tech abilities to even fewer than we used to. I mean I you bet you you're old enough maybe to remember Revenge of the Nerds, sure. where you know there was a sizable nerd population out there, but right. now we've taken it. But but here's the difference. Back then, at least we were exposed to the scientific concepts, meaning back then and and follow me here. Well, there wasn't that. There wasn't every. There wasn't every. All these other distractions like the internet that's and true. a mobile device stuck to you twenty four seven. That's true. And ninety five channels of shit. Isn't that true? The, the, what's happened is our our basic scientific and and if I again if I had a whiteboard I could show you our basic sure. scientific equation comprehension level has decreased to such a point. <laughs> that and and really the 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 bottom the the layman's term is well we're just going to leave science to the scientists meaning we're we don't even want to hear a scientific term if it's not entertainment based we don't want to hear it there's a problem with that and the problem is now because now that we've we, you know here, here's what we're becoming well it's hard to defend your points when you can't do basic math bingo exactly so when 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 the average beforehand in any given debate you know republican versus democrat or, or one side versus the other you're going to have one side present the other side presents and generally it's a push mm -hmm. where it's like you know the audience listens to both it's like well they both had interesting points I, i'm i'm undecided well, what's happened now is the science community has 
never dumb down any of their stuff. It's like how how far down can you take a basic math equation before you know the, the scientists the the nerds never bothered to dumb down anything. So when flat Earth came around. The concepts that we were putting out there, especially with the, with the clues that I did, the flat Earth clues. Remember, there was no math in my flat Earth clues. Well, the, the, the flat Earth is much more easier to grasp than a uh, than gravity and the exactly three thousand miles an hour and a locked row, you know bingo absolutely or around the sun. You, you, no, in normal block. normal cases, you would have let's say we'll just round up let's say thirty scientific points against flat Earth, and the flat Earthers have thirty points for their side. Well, now, because the general public can't even begin to understand, let's say, two-thirds of those scientific points, you might as well be playing them an old recording of a fax handshake. You know, you know that sort of thing. Meaning but they I, don't I, even I, they don't even hear it. <laughs> and so what's left is you've got the flat earthers, you know, throwing out these simple concepts. Saying, oh, yeah, in a picture's worth a thousand words, here's a picture. Here's a dome. Here's, here's some great quotes. Here's some Einstein stuff. And you know, general general quotes and right. the scientific community doesn't have a defense against it you add in the fact that science general science really doesn't publish a lot on youtube and youtube is currently right now the most powerful force in media it is everyone knows it you know television the 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 television's dying the, the just sure. general general networks are dying i mean netflix Absolutely. has become the mm -hmm. biggest producer in hollywood right now and that's that's a sad state of affairs. That means everybody's streaming, and if everybody's streaming, everybody's going after YouTube because YouTube's easy, it's quick, and there's a million different things you can look at on 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 YouTube. And that's sure. you know, it's, there's more <clears throat> than that. So anyway, the the point is, it's the, a fantastic place, yet a horror. It is, it is. <laughs> it is so many rabbit holes you can fall down and get stuck in. The great time waster. It is, but but you can binge watch on YouTube so fast and that's what people start doing so when they sure. got into flat earth and i've heard this story so many times where they'll say oh yeah i got into flat earth and i started watching because now you know there's a huge amount of content on, yes. on flat earth is out there people will say i just basically didn't sleep for a week or In 10 days or degrees of um well done content oh yeah oh yeah and the and the, yeah the quality keeps going up to, uh, on the content to where now we've got big I mean if you type in just flat earth and, and just skim like the first 50 videos there's a lot of good stuff out there a lot of a lot of really really great stuff and as of uh, about a month ago the ever since the conference the uh, now you've got some big channels that are like, a lot of verified channels you know like Vice News of course it comes up at the top of the list almost every time now and that's HBO you know they spent what three days with us down there for a four minute sure. segment sure. Ugh, go figure but well, they know what kind of views that flat earth gets yeah well yeah i mean it's 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 when, when you type in flat earth and i'm not getting you guys can do this yourself if you type in flat earth into youtube right now and just hit the general filter it'll come in at like five million or something that hits which is amazing get a member that when we first started this in the beginning of 2015 you maybe have gotten fifty thousand relevant search results what's interesting right. though the real number is if you click on the filter and sort by upload date it comes in as of this morning at like 18.9 million and that's wow. and you're thinking okay what's 18.9 million was that related to okay if you type in a lady gaga and sort like by upload date she comes in at 16. Mm -hmm. you type in donald trump he comes in at 20. that's the current most talked about president in the history of the united states and he's only been in a you know a year and change so what do we what are we talking about here we're talking about a massive uptick with almost no marketing dollars behind it and the producers have been swimming around this thing since the end of 2015 and now they're finally starting to pull the triggers on on several projects that's like what took you guys so long i i, I understand you don't want to be the first person on the dance floor because you know you don't want to look like an idiot but come on i mean this thing's so polarizing uh, you, you either love it or you hate it. There's almost nobody that I've run into that's on the fence about it. So. Yeah, I'm not on the fence about it. I don't hate it. I, <laughs> There's a lot I, of people that do, still, though. Well, let's just, just say everybody. I, not, I mean, with full disclosure, I'm not a believer. That's okay. I, and I, 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 I'm just very curious about why people believe it. Yeah. I, it, I'm, I'm not a rocket scientist, but I am the son of a rocket scientist. Ooh, oh, I should I should have probably asked you that before I <laughs> came on the show. No, I've done I've had people 
jump up and down and and yell and scream and swear you know and, you know again no. people it's like oh you know my father and my grandfather worked for nasa i was going yeah it's fine they didn't know uh, because a lot of the, the one of the first re uh, responses for people is well doesn't this have to be such a huge conspiracy that you'd never be able to keep it a secret i'm going no this isn't the manhattan project this isn't where hundreds of thousands of people across the United well, States. Were. That's, I mean, I've thought about that too, but I know how that, I know how defense contractors work. They sure. departmentalize, you know, depart oh, yeah. departmentalize yeah. you know, different things, different parts of each project project. But okay. uh, you don't, the, what, what, what I don't understand is why, if, if, if uh, the government is keeping, why is the government keeping it from us? Oh, what, well, point? and, and I, and I, I covered it in the clues, but I'll, I'll give you the short version. Okay. Which is, this this thing is so big and it answers such a core fundamental question that it actually threatens the general power structure let me sure. let's take it to 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 the end meaning sure. let's say the united nations let's say a giant golden spaceship lands somewhere in africa and they come out and they said oh yeah by the way we're an old civilization we helped build this place and right. people are going what are you talking about built the earth it's like well, not the Earth, you know. You know, it's, it's and then they show you know like a snow globe, domey type thing. It looks like a shallow sports stadium. You know, they they show you you know they beam it to all our phones simultaneously. Think of the shock waves that that may happen right away. First off, academia. Well, it's three three. It, it's in three parts: academics, economics, and uh, religious overtones. So academics, that's a no-brainer. I mean, uh, astrophysics and astronomy, every one of those departments and every university that has them, and there's a lot, in all over the place, they, they shut their doors tomorrow. The remaining physical sciences, uh, geology, hydrology, bi biology, archaeology, d doesn't really matter. As long as it's a physical science, those have to be literally be retooled from the ground up, some play on words there. That's the academic side. The economic side, as you know, the, the, the world markets now are so interconnected and so twitchy. Even now, I mean, let, let's say Donald Trump got pneumonia tomorrow and was on his deathbed. Do you know the markets, how, how they would react? We, that's all speculation. It's because there's, they're, they're thinking down the road. They're exactly. What, they might, what he might do. Well, there you, there you go. I multiply that by an entire world economy. How does living in uh, an enclosed world change the economics? Meaning what industries are relevant? What aren't? Do you still go to war? If you're if you're in this if you're all inside the same thing, well, I mean, I look at it. We all have this. We'll still have the same amount of resources. We we don't we don't trade outside of the atmosphere. We we would that all is, that is, oceans still are the same. That is true, but at the same so time, routes, trading routes would not change. They, they might though, because remember, Antarctica up until this point has not been a resource it was locked it was locked down in 1959 sealed off for all time by uh, with an ironclad treaty in the history of treaties it's never ever happened which says no country can do resources ever 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 and it's not even up for debate till 2041 that treaty would go away and i mean immediately everyone would have start heading out towards the ice to try to figure out what was going on well, you and, know, and, that, was, that was back down. A lot of that was because of whaling. Uh, what, on the ice? Come on. Oh, you, on the outside of the ice. Like, that's where the whales go. I mean, that's, of course. Yeah, you want to you want to go with the whaling angle, that's fine. But don't tell no, me. No, that's just what I, you know, that's. Oh, no, I, I hear you. I hear you. But at the same time, we're talking about on the on the ice. We're talking million, at the very least, millions of square miles of, sure. of, of nothing, right? No indigenous plant life, no animal right. life. There's right. no indigenous uh, population. There's nothing out there. And yet no <laughs> one will lay, you know, nobody owns Antarctica. Find me another piece of real estate anywhere, anywhere that does not have a property title on it by some country. And, and it's weird. You'd think somebody would fight over the, you know, in fact, the other, the thing that got me was the, was the Admiral Byrd footage. That was one of my, one of my turning points, which was, mm -hmm. and we were lucky to get it from that CBS affiliate where, he comes on on 
on you know the the national television show. Remember, this is back when there was only three channels. Oh, yeah, I think I saw that on one of these uh, one of the videos. Yeah, yeah. He comes out in 1954. It was the the show was called the Long Jeans Chronoscope, which I think was a watch company. It's kind of like a 60 <laughs> minutes of its day. They were the ones that were sponsoring it. And they had some good journalists sure. out there, but they were yeah. asking him, and he says, "Yeah, the place is basically made out of money." He was in between missions. He had been down there since 1928. You know the the youngest admiral in the history of the United States. And he was looking for something. And he's, in his last mission, which happened to be just after that show aired, was Operation Deep Freeze. And he goes, the whole place is basically made out of money. There's an entire mountain range made out of coal that could supply the world. There's minerals, there's oil, there's uranium. And he's like, he's not supposed to even be talking about uranium. Well, the, the, let, me, let me stop you there and say this. There's a reason why, a lot of the reason... I would think that they didn't go there is because it's incredibly tough to drill. Why drill there when you can drill everywhere else? Oh, well, at the time, sure. It's in, in 1959, to drill, it's a lot drill, cheaper to make an oil derrick in the ocean it, than it is to drill through miles of ice. It is. It is. Well, in 1959, it is. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Or 1955, 56, when he was down 2018, there. 2018, it is. Well, but it's totally worth it for, to us now. Barrel of oil back in 1959, dirt cheap. Nowadays, mm. we, we'd go after anything we could. And you know, and it's, remember, it's not just the Americans. Remember, there's other countries. Remember, Russia was... Russia. Russia was trying to rebuild from World War II. The UK sure. was trying to rebuild China. This is this treaty. What makes this treaty amazing is that all nations, regardless of their alliances and squabbles and blood feuds between each other, all of them signed off on it unilaterally, sure. saying you know, and it meaning no. What China's not going to make a run for it. Russia's not going to. Back then, it was the Soviet you know, up until the Soviet Union. Um, and then on not only that, here, here's the other thing that got me about the, about the, the Antarctic, Antarctic Treaty was that not only are they not going down there, but no one even talks about going down there. Meaning if it was me, let's say, you know, full well, if you're the head of, let's say, ExxonMobil, right, you've got gobs and gobs of liquid resources. I mean, if I if you were if you were the head of ExxonMobil, you could start fracking in my backyard tomorrow. If you wanted to, it's just a question of who you're going to bribe. I mean, they're getting into national parks; they're winning. I mean, the entire western half of the United States. Uh, I know it, it's disgusting. It's amazing the amount of fracking that's going on, but that's a whole other a whole other thing. Sure. But the point is, is that if I was, if you were running that, what's to stop you from going to your buddy who's the editor down at the New York Times, the Washington Post, or whoever, and saying, "Hey, I want to run a full page ad every week, saying how great it would be for Robert's company to go down to Antarctica and start setting up shop." It'd be great, except we have a treaty. <laughs> does a, the treaty's <laughs> one thing, but the treaty doesn't stop you from lobbying. So well, why I, doesn't anybody I, lobby I, about this? Why I don't you? I mean, it's an international treaty, though. I mean, you can't. It's not like lobbying Congress. That's that's very true. That's but that's also my point. Meaning, what inter, It's it's the only treaty in the history of treaties, and you know how many treaties have been broken. Pretty much all of them, right. in, in the history of the world, have been broken. This treaty. Well, I think I think they all know that there's huge resources there, and if any one country started jumping in, that would be would be war. So, uh, the war over over ice and snow. Over why, resources. Well, that's just it. Why not? Why have we? We don't even see the stories that lead up to this tension. I mean, for God's sakes, we've had what, the the threat of, of Russia every other month. There's a new story about oh tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union. It's like, look, I've heard this now for you know, not I'm not old enough, but I've heard this now for 60 years. Right? This this Cold War thing. So why haven't we seen the tensions? It's like China pushing to, to do resources in Antarctica. Uh, Russia, ever, especially since the breakup of the Soviet Union, pushing to do stuff in Antarctica. And I don't I don't want to beat a. a well, beat. I mean, you know, Russia just just Russia as an example has huge ginormous natural resources. Sure. The only reason their economy is in the toilet is because the price of oil has went in the dumper. No. Well. You, you kind of see where I'm going here, though, right? I, I mean, I, I, no, I totally. I'm very. I, I like this idea because I haven't thought about it, and it's interesting. I mean, that's you. You bring up an interesting point. It, it's one of those things that it really struck home with me because if the world is based off of, we all know, money and greed and power. 
Sure. How does when when the when the authority of the of the time, you know, Admiral Byrd goes down there and says, "Oh yeah." He goes, "I'm worried we're actually going to start fighting over these resources." And then the second he gets back from Operation Deep Freeze, everybody off the ice. It's mm-hmm. like get it, they could not get off fast enough and the treaties like starting to be put in place almost immediately it, it, no discussion about anything you know it's not like you, you think a treaty like that would take years and lots of disagreements and, and 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 fighting over it's like well we don't want to sign the treaty no 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 no, no. everybody was on the board the 12 nations i think that were on the board at the time they all signed oh yeah and and every country that came online is an economic power Right. That treaty was put in front of them. And we said, oh, yeah, by the way, you're going to sign this if you're going to start trading in the well, world. It's, it's not like we don't have, there's not people at, in our Antarctica. Not a lot. Very few. I mean, because, there's there's uh, some mili- there's a few military bases. Well, there's scientific labs that there. There's yeah. all, there's little research centers there, but sure. it's such a harsh environment that it's that you harsh. Can't... Harsh is one thing, but is it any more harsh than, and I know you're going to say. Uh, Absolutely, it's, it's harsher than the South Pole. Well, no, no, no. I mean, harsher, harsher than say an oil rig. I mean, working on an oil rig, yeah, it's Absolutely. it's it's a it's an awful you, thing. Well, I mean, you can an oil rig. You're not going to freeze, even if you're in the you know the North Atlantic. You're not going to freeze to death while standing on the deck. It's still a very unpleasant place. It's very unpleasant, but it's not the harsh climate of Antarctica we, uh, for sure. I agree, but it, yeah, it would be the the last frontier. But at the same time, it's it's completely doable. Absolutely, right. we we've done for money. Uh, money has no limits when it comes to this. No, sure. I mean, the, I mean, you, you can see the little science bases they have up there. I mean, if you strung enough of those together, you could house people. But it's it would be the drilling apparatus would have to be mechanized, the, and, the, and 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 machines don't do that well. What I, what <laughs> and, I and you know, electronics don't do that well. Even you know, even I mean, unless you're. Uh, Super, a superconductor would love it. I guess that, that's true. <laughs> what I what I proposed was in the clues. I said, "Here's the here's if I wanted to seal off the outer edge, here's what I would do. I would not let any companies go down there for one simple reason, and that is encroachment, attrition, uh, meaning." Or- find the edge uh, well sooner or later it wouldn't be right away i mean admiral bird was looking for it for the better part of 30 years and and didn't find anything but until until the very end but let's say you had a petroleum company down there or a, a, a mineral alcoa or one of the big mineral companies and they were down there sooner or later because these guys have big resources decent mi- equipment eventually sure. a plane's gonna go rogue a plane eventually a helicopter's gonna go rogue and you know they're gonna get lost whatever and and that's the, that's the question that comes up in you know the the super secret meetings it's like okay what happens if we let the companies go down there well okay one of two things one either we're gonna have to deal with rogue aircraft and, the, and what happens what do we do with them if they get to this point do we shoot them down do we have to cover it up it's like oh what a pain in the ass that is or do you go the other way and or do you draw a line in the sand and say oh yeah by the way oil company x you can go out this far but mm-hmm. after this, after this line, you can't you can't explore any further, and then it's like okay, you got to answer that question, which is okay. Why can't we go any further than that? It's like well, okay, what do you do? National security, uh, radiation poisoning. What, what do you what do you say? So there, the the response is, and I've seen those other things like the moon landing. No offense if you believe in the moon landing, but which is how do you instead of dealing with remember because in 1969 the Apollo program, uh, how do you deal with the different star constellations in your date timestamps because remember if the belt of orion is in the wrong place some nerd is gonna figure it out that the belt of orion is in the wrong place like man that should be over his right shoulder that shouldn't be over or it should be on this side or shouldn't even be visible and so they just say okay we're just not gonna put stars in the pictures at all we're just gonna get rid of it entirely it's kind of baby in the bathwater talking about the, the the pictures they took on the moon supposedly yes yes which is there's no there's no stars any in any of the pictures and i understood it because Are, you, you ever done much photography <laughs> a little why you're i know you're gonna say that you no know, stars ever ever can't be visible right well no no they can be visible but the the i mean if you're like um i do videography and photography and stuff for a living sure so i mean if you if i'm an all white if i'm on a white floor okay and uh, we're using lighting, and the, the floor is lit. Mm-hmm. 
Well, you're not going to see little dots of light out in the in space because the the aperture in the camera is going to be jerked down because there's a lot of light around you. And gotcha. the, you right. know that's that's, yeah, that's so, I mean that 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 would be it would be normal not to see stars if you were shooting on that kind of thing. So I think maybe if they did fake it, well, they thought about well, that's how cameras work. Well, and that's the excuse they give, of course, of course it is, but it's also pretty convenient because again back in 1969 you didn't you didn't <laughs> i mean it, i mean that's that's where the conspiratorial conspiratorial mindset comes in i guess because it it does but at the same time i well, well okay first up the, the stars are not my big thing when it comes to the moon anyway the stars right. because because that's the excuse they throw out there and the average person on the street's gonna buy it absolutely they are even though i know full well that software wise because there wasn't enough software back in 1969 to pull off an accurate uh, constellation date time stamp thing you're not gonna be able to do it it'd be too much of a pain in the ass and you'd never be able to pull it off but for me the big things when it came to the the moon missions uh two navigational computers the what Navig oh, the, talking about navigational computers on the uh no oh, well no, no, i pff, navigation computers that's a whole nother thing i mean d don't don't get me started on the actual craft itself how about how about just the 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 two the th one two three let's top three points for me when it comes to the moon and sorry let, let let's sure let's leave antarctica for a minute because okay. really when it comes to the flat earth a lot of people in a in, well i think it's all part of them i think it's all part of the the whole the whole theory of everything is that you know we've been lied to this long nasa's a big bunch of liars and oh sure uh, that uh, we can't believe anything they say because they fake the moon landing number one and if, uh, these other things. Yeah, the Na when it came to NASA, and I didn't believe in the moon landings for a number of years anyway, uh, mm. because but I couldn't come up with a good enough reason. That was the, you know, like you were saying. Well, why would the government hide the flat Earth? Uh, the, you know, it didn't take me long to figure out that what one. The cash for why? Why they build? What they do with all the stuff they build? Just chunk it in the ocean? Oh, you mean for NASA? Like satellites and stuff that they um, built. Well, they some of it, that? some of it. Well, remember, you can still create jobs and you can still do stuff. You can yeah. go through the motions, and and people make money. I mean, ninety nine point nine nine percent of NASA people, the wrench turners, they don't have to know anything. They build stuff, they fire it off, and yeah, they. Ang I mean, look at the time lapse of any any rocket uh, uh, trajectory, and it goes horizontal pretty much under the first hundred miles and goes off into the ocean and they'll they, even nasa admits they dump the boosters and everything else in the ocean it's like okay why not just dump the whole thing who's gonna know but right. but when it comes to the space program uh the the because for the longest time i was like okay why would you fake it it's you just didn't have enough motivation to go there in the first place then i started looking at the whole enclosed world thing and so I, that's so that, okay. That's what brings me back. That's what I was about to say. So I guess the whole reason for them to fake all this stuff, yeah, is to keep us thinking that we're on a globe. Yeah, that's that's the entire reason. That, that's why I try to run at people and I say, okay, first off, if you believe in the Apollo program, I mean, you really, really believe in it, like you actually have a, a signed thing by Buzz Aldrin sitting on your wall, then there's not much I can do for you because you're 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 too far gone. But yeah, I'm. I'm saying that it's worse. Than, it's, it's worse than it's worse than you know because I'm not just saying that that NASA was fake. I'm saying the only reason NASA was created in 1958 was to keep this thing not necessarily under wraps because it's a poor choice of words. It to keep this thing. So this is a. This would be a global. This is a completely global conspiracy. Then. Yeah. I'm. I mean, not not to make it. Yeah, fun, yeah. But but I mean. You, Every nation that has a space program, which is one, two, three, four, five, five, what seven? Seven at least. Yeah, would have uh, to be have at the highest levels. Would have to know. Yeah, functional space program. Yeah. I mean, you know, they would have to be, you know, concealing the flat Earth. Yeah, yeah, they would. But remember, everybody blueprinted off NASA and the Soviet Union to a lesser degree. But where where do you want to start with that? Uh, the Soviet Union, uh, the space race. Oh my God. The, 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 the whole term, the space race, it was supposed to be this epic battle. I mean, look up the old Time magazine photos or t covers where well, you... A lot of that was propaganda because, you know, we were trying to beat the commies. Well, yes, of course. But the point is, if it was this joint space race, this joint Cold War, this joint, this, this, this big enemy thing, even though Russia was down there on the ice with us in Antarctica in the 50s when this thing happened, I have no doubt we, we were working together on this. Why did the Russians stop? 
Because when it comes to a space race, what, is all of a sudden the Americans make it to the moon and that's it? Russia's like, eh, just pack it up. When do you see this in any other sports competition? Well, For, they, they also financially collapsed. Not in 1969, they didn't. They were well, they were still going strong. Don't, don't give me that. It's space. Well, it, 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 we got to the moon first, and that it, was it. That was it. So that's it. Russia doesn't. That's Russia just quits. So instead of us putting three people down and Russia putting four people down, and then we make a small base and Russia makes a bigger base, and the next thing, Time Magazine runs a story that says, "Has the Cold War moved to the moon?" You know <laughs> that's the headline. That's what it was supposed to be. That was right. the big the big thing. But instead, well, it was like we just got you, there, and that was it. Every... Well, how, how old are you? How old are you? Let me. Forty nine. Okay, forty nine. Well, I'm I'm forty eight. Okay. Um. So I was born in sixty nine, and I think um. I I I didn't live through this because I was a kid. I don't remember, but I know e after each launch, yeah, people got less and less interested in it because, you know, the rockets weren't blowing up, uh, as much as they used to. Yeah. In the beginning, it all became old hat after you know uh, that it's deliberately you, by the way. Absolutely, that was the plan from day one. Which is that you know, you know, the Cronkite wasn't out there at Mission Control anymore. So it, I don't know. Maybe it, uh, let me uh, let me answer. Let me ask you a question I, that I that I posed to the. Well, I'm trying to pose to an astronaut. I talked to one astronaut, but he wouldn't even address me by name. <laughs> uh, on and that was on a on a British national show. Would not say my name. Wouldn't even talk to me. Was yeah. only talking. That was Good Morning Britain. Oh, well, I think they get pissed off because I think that you know a lot of people less you know spent their whole lives um, trying to do. Oh sure, things. sure, sure. Okay, let me. I'll ask you the question I'd ask an astronaut. Yeah. You, you you sound educated enough. You ready? Here we go. It's an easy question. Are the Van Allen radiation belts deadly? Hell yeah. Are they? Absolutely. That's fantastic. Great. So what shielding exactly was used in the Van Allen radiation belts? Very little, but they knew there's t they're, they timed it. You know, they, they, there's it. certain times when they're, it's worse than others. Look it up. That's actually not bad. That's not bad, except that it's dead wrong. I mean, it is. Oh, yeah. We're talking the belts that well, are supposedly well, well, between well, twenty well, and 60,000 miles thick. So why should there even be a Van Allen belt if we're in a flat Earth system? There isn't. There never was. The Van Allen belts were announced by Van Allen in 1959. By the way, the same year that the Antarctic Treaty was put into place. And this I knew is, it. It was. And it, you're saying, oh, it's, this this is a tin hat thing, right? It's like, no, 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 no. no hear, hear me out. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't. Round I, trip. I don't, round trip through these belts. Sick Apollo 11 through 17. And I know uh, 13, 13 still counts because even though they supposedly didn't land on the moon, they still went through it. Round trips, nobody died, nobody got radiation poisoning, nobody even got cancer. Now, they got a little bit of dose, but the thing is, it's, you know, just as you know, if you know anything about radiation. I know a lot about radiation. It's not just the dose, it's the timing of the dose. It's how long you Hours. get that dose. Hours and don't and and they, here here's the thing when when Van Allen announced it in 1959 or sorry they 19 definitely, definitely got a dose I'll tell you that did they well amazing well, where's where's there. the detoxification why weren't those capsules just glowing why wasn't that Geiger counter pegged scale high when they because, came back because the, I mean it wasn't that high oh, come the, on. The we're come on Van Allen, Van Allen comes out this they, it was one of the biggest backpedaling I've ever seen in the history of science where Van Allen comes out in 59 and says super lethal no one should ever ever go up there right. then Kennedy announces oh we're gonna go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing it's like oh, well, whatever you, you know as well as I do that each just like a lawyer each scientist is gonna have a varied thought on things that's why you have peer review for one and that's why you win a Nobel prize by you know proving some other scientist theory wrong <laughs> yeah but he never retracted it that was the thing you know I, 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 if that's the case, that's bizarre. He he came out it, because they went back to him. You know, the press they were boy, back when we had journalists. They they went back to him and said, "Hey, Van Allen, how are they going to get through? How are these guys going to go?" And well, you know just, his answer yeah. was, "We're going to go real, real fast." That's well, what his answer was. Well, it's, that's 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 where you get to where you're not spending much time going through it. And that's on the, the way key. out, on the way out, sure, I'll buy that. If you're if you're best speed, let's say 17, 18,000 miles an hour, I'll buy that. But on the way back, no, 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 no. On the way back, you're going pretty slow, especially since you got to land in Earth's gravity. You're hitting the brakes big time. 
you, there is no way. And by the way, we're talking about no shielding at all. And, and the, by the way, this is a trap question. I not meant for you necessarily, but it's a trap sure. question. No matter how you answer, there's there's no right way to get out of this, because there's there's no shielding. I mean, lead and gold. That's it. You know, unless you use a lot of water. That's the only way you're beating radiation. They didn't use any any of it. They used aluminum and plastic. No, there is gold foil in the in the lunar lander. There's gold foil on those things. Are you kidding? It's not in the specs. Have you not? Been not on the, the capsule. The National Air and Space Museum. I've been there. Been to the Smithsonian. Been to the one up in Seattle. We're not talking about the lander, not the craft that's on the legs. We're talking about the capsule itself. Look it up. There's no. And even if there was some layer of gold in there, it is not enough to beat what they were talking about. Well, I mean, look, I'm not. Like I said, I'm not a rocket scientist. I am. I'm not no, an engineer. No, I got so. you. Here, so, I'll throw I, I, one, I'll, let me throw I, one more thing and we'll move to another sure. topic, which is because the, the other side of that question, if they said that it's not deadly, if it's not deadly, I go, okay, fine. Then, I don't, I, whoever said it was the Van Allen belt wasn't deadly. Radiation's deadly by default. I, yeah, I would have, would have thought the same thing, but I've had people come at me and say, well, it depends or, oh, it's not so deadly. It's like, really? Because if you go to the NASA's website, uh, only if you limit the exposure, and that's it. Again, we're talking hours. We're not. We're not talking minutes here. We're talking depends hours. On, depends the, on the, the let, let me let me get this part out. Which is, you go to the NASA website. You, get, you can look at this this up on, on Google. Type in Orion Trial by Fire. It, that's the Orion program. Of course, is the fictitious Mars program that is never ever going to happen. And on the on NASA.gov. So, okay, let's okay, let's ho hold off for a second there. Hmm. What about SpaceX and Bezos's thing? That's all fake, part of it. <laughs> it's all it's all complete crap. SpaceX. Every time Elon Musk opens his mouth, he is lying through his teeth. I know I'm mixing things there, but it's true. Well, Elon you, Musk has doesn't do the purpose. The what? I don't understand the purpose of all the. Um... Oh, they're, they're trying to dump off. They're trying to shut down as much as they can and sub off everything they can to private contractors. Now, beforehand, it was keep the private contractors out as long as humanly possible. And then slowly but surely, they had to come up with some sort of replacement once they shut down the space shuttle program. A lot of, most Americans don't even know. We don't even have a space shuttle program anymore. It's gone. Shut down. Everybody knows that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> most people don't know the cap capitals of most states. They don't know if the space shuttle program has been shut down. Elon Musk was every time he opens his mouth, it's a headline, and it just crushes me. Every do you realize he he said that they're supposed to be sending tourists around the moon this year? Two tourists. That that was a two two lucky oh, yeah, people. It was supposed to be the the. I thought it was just orbit. I thought it was just orbit for the latter part of uh, 2018. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they're not landing on the moon. They're going around it. They're, they're just they're just circling it. They're not landing it. But it's like, with what? Okay, with what booster? The Falcon Heavy? You haven't even tested that thing yet. With what capsule? Okay, if you got two passengers, how many legit pilots do you have? Is that five people in that thing, or do you only have four? What what capsule you you're using for four people? When have you were gonna test that thing? Oh my God! There's so many little things. That's what, all this crap that he's saying, and and the the timeline that he was proposing. It was so unbelievably aggressive. It was it was mind boggling for me. That, that's part of his uh, mo anyway. I so. know, I know it is, and it drives me it drives me insane that the the press doesn't question it. Well, I think they, they a lot of them do. I've I've seen them being questioned a lot as far as like the Model Three, the new car, and uh, you know, yeah, they, great. I, I sorry, the man could be doing more with his twenty billion. It's like yeah, make electric cars for the rich, fantastic, and a well, space program. Well, I, I, I doing did. Uh, well, the the Model Three is not for the rich. It's pretty well reasonable. Um, <laughs> Really, you see you see those cars a lot in the, in, on the everyday commutes. Not a lot well, of those cars. There's a few, uh, but I, they, well, that's the whole idea. I think is to try to get people going in that direction. Anyway, not everybody's going to drive a Tesla, that's for sure. The, uh, it's the, a, I mean, what about the? Um, I think the the one good thing that I've seen him do was that uh, new power system that he plopped down in Australia in a hundred days. Do you see that? Is the similar system he was trying to talk about that he was going to do for Puerto Rico after the hurricane hit? Absolutely. He said that we could do it in 100 days or it's free. The Auster Australian government said, yeah, and he did it. Yeah, but Puerto Rico didn't work. Uh, I don't think Puerto Rico would do it. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. What or, or, I, or whatever the, the strings were attached. The The yeah. point is, is that what, what I, when Australia he, has a functioning government, by the way. They don't? 
<laughs> I said they have a function. Oh, they code. do. Oh, that's true. Where Puerto Rico is pretty much the wasteland. <laughs> right. The um, uh, what? Okay, two two quick things. One, uh, even before the the Elon Musk thing, the Google X Prize. If I think it was the Google X Prize, if you remember that, where five countries were going to winner, uh, first first com- company or country. Choose. Oh, that was that was, a, that was the NASA X Prize. Was it NASA X or Google X? I thought it was a private company that. No, it was NASA. Uh, whatever. Twenty twenty million dollars. The first person, first group to send a probe to the moon and beam back pictures, right? And the five countries, I think, it were uh, the United States, the Europeans, the Indians, the Japanese, and the Israelis of all people. I thought that was weird. I was going Israeli as a space program. Anyway, the yeah, point... they had quite nice uh, nuclear missiles. Well, they have that. <laughs> like we haven't been shipping them weapons for forever. Sorry. Anyway, the point was that was the other round. The real quick that that prize was supposed to launch uh, at the end of 2017. That was supposed. That was the whole thing. It was all of 2017. They announced at the beginning of 2017. They said, "Oh yeah, uh, you." That's the the qualifier. You have to launch by the end of 2017. And I I called it. I said, "By the fall, they're going to kick that can down the road. It is never going to happen." By the fall, they kicked it. Oh yeah, the the drop dead date for the launch is going to be April of 2018. I can guarantee you, none of those countries, nobody's sending anything because you can't. You can't do it. The Mars mission, Mars mission is impossible anyway. Oh, no, you're right. It was the Google Lunar X Prize. I'm, oh, okay. I was, I was Good. I, I was, thought it was running into a, a man, Mandetta effect there for a second. <laughs> Mandela, you're right. Right. <laughs> so, and, and by the way, I do that deliberately with people. Hey, grand, grand, grand prize, 20 million bucks. 20 million bucks. And we'll only yet, spend 8 million to do it. And you have to, but you have to beam back images. And they, of course, they didn't clarify. It's like, we're talking a video, what sort of K, what sort of resolution. But the point was that never happened. Same sort of thing with Elon Musk. He can talk about it all he wants, but, but when, if you're going to well, come it up. Looks like the, it looks like it's still going on. What the, the. Oh yeah, of course, of course, it hasn't it hasn't closed down yet, but it's going to. No different than the Elon here's, Musk thing. Here's the requirement: successfully place a spacecraft on the moon's surface, travel 500 meters, transmit high definition video images back to Earth. If you do that, you get 20 million bucks. Yep. Good luck. Never gonna never gonna happen. And here's the reason: the the big problem between that and Elon Musk sending the tourists around the moon mm-hmm. is isn't the Falcon Heavy and isn't the capsule. The problem is is that the cameras nowadays. Out of all the technologies we have improved over the last, let's say, 20, 30 years, camera technology, digital ca- technology sure. has gotten very, very, very good, which means sure. that you do not have an excuse to cover. I mean, seriously, you get 4K cameras in a bo- bottom of a box of cereal now. For you, th- those Anything that leaves this world, if you believe in mainstream science, should be bristling with 4K cameras. And try you try to not try to try to hide that you try to make those systems fail between here and the moon. It's you, how are you going to do it? You're going to say, "Oh, that camera went down," or we had this failure, this well, failure. Let me ask you this: What if they do do it? Are the images going to be fake? And I mean, that will be the explanation of flat if, Earth. If it, well, Japan. we'll analyze the images as best we can. But if they're decent images, th- and that was my only requirement. I've said this on several different things. I said because they say, "What will prove to you that the Earth is a globe?" I go unedited. You you turn the cameras on on the launch pad it's not like we don't have the memory capabilities nowadays those things can run forever at 4k or 8k or whatever they're up to now you turn it on at the pad and you let it go and the earth falls away and it starts becoming a globe and starts becoming a globe and there it is there's the globe and then you have another one that's pointing back in the moon you date time stamp it you allow us allow us to look at it in photoshop or whatever and that's it and then i'll quit flat earth tomorrow i will but it's never, ever happened. Every camera that has ever go, gone up on every rocket has always dropped off by stage two. Always. And there is no forward-facing cameras. It kills me. It is like, and even today, I mean, it's 2018. Show me a picture of the Earth from space rotating on its axis with the weather morphing simultaneously. You can get one or you can get the other. You can get the Earth rotating on its axis now. By the way, that was only as of the summer of 2015. We were asking for it at the beginning of 2015. Well, you're you're talking about things that would be orbiting like a satellite would be orbiting. Even if it's way away from the – even if it's in moon orbit, it's still orbiting. So you can't take a stationary shot of the full orbit of the Earth unless you – Stays, unless it's like you, a geo, geostationary orbit? 
<laughs> well, if you stabilize, yeah, and stay there. There spot, should be something out there. You you know full well. We have television channels for everything. But I mean, to get a full big thing of the Earth, you got to get pretty damn far away. What's the moon supposedly? Uh, 200, 237,000 yeah. miles. Yeah. Okay, let, that brings me up to another well, point. Which okay, is, yeah. I have another point, too, but let's maybe you're going to the same place. Probably the same thing. Maybe. And that is the first picture, blue marble shot of the Earth. You guys can look this up anytime you want. Type in blue marble picture of the Earth. Sure. First sure. one was taken in 1972 during Apollo 17. Right. Why it was not taken from Apollo 11 through 16, I have no idea. You want to wait literally until the way back home from the last mission, because you know a 17 is going to be your last mission, and say, oh yeah, might as well take a shot of the Earth, then you take it, that's fine. But you know how long they milked that picture? The second, the, that, that blue marble shot in 1972 was never, ever taken again. And remember, we're not talking about from the moon distance. We're talking about much, much closer. Was never taken again until 2015, until the summer of 2015. That's 43 years. All those objects supposedly flying well, around the guess, earth. I guess they didn't uh, think they needed to have proof for you guys. <laughs> 43 years? That's two <laughs> generations of people. It was killing us. We're going, we're, and, and I only knew this. I, I honestly, I thought it was a, a joke. It's I could, only killing you if you think it's fake. <sighs> that is that is true. And that's why they milked it. Because why, they, they mean, could, so why, why would they... Why I mean, would they not release a second picture? Payloads on little devices that get shot into space are pretty, uh, you know, specialized. They're, they no cameras? Just, Let's ever? throw a GoPro on it. No, no cameras from all... There's supposedly like 10,000 you know, oh, things I up think, there. I think, you know, cameras, you know, take a little bit more power than you might think. Memory's easy, but cameras, you know, pull a little bit. Uh, not, not, not buying it. There's too many, too many, too many things up there. I'm, I'm just trying to explain why they might not. Oh, I, I got you. No, I've heard, I've heard some of them. I have, but it, it but seems. But I agree with you. I think there should, I would put a camera on everything, but that's just me. I would, you know. Yeah, and oh, was, so why camera. why haven't we? In fact, we we were asking, and it wasn't me that found this one out, where uh, literally up until, well, Russia today produced something, but they completely got the perspective wrong, which was, and that was only in 2017, which was a Gemini, Mercury, Apollo. There has never been a single movie of any astronaut when he walks outside of a spacecraft, I don't care where it is, the moon, anything in orbit, where they they leave the camera running and they turn 180 degrees or further you know you know turn around or, or do a 360 or whatever with the camera running it's sure. never ever happened and then russia today like they were listening to us because they they hate flat earth and so they were putting some stuff out and they said oh yeah here's one that we did from from the iss and they completely screwed up the, pers the perspective of florida where the iss is supposedly orbiting at four, 400 miles and it's like and then florida comes in below and it's like we matched it up with google earth and it's like so why does florida look like it's 1600 miles away and not yeah. 400 it's like why, why where'd you pull up this crap so the point is even statistically speaking and i and i covered this in the clues even statistically speaking that should have happened by accident i mean somebody on the moon that's the first thing you're going to do it's like i'm turn on the camera and just turn around in a circle but you can't if the fourth wall scenario comes into effect which means if, <laughs> if, if you're on a studio you can only, yeah you can only go three walls and that's straight out of capricorn one which i the, the whole reason even capricorn one was made which I love. If you're you're old enough to remember yeah, Capricorn sure, One, sure, the only reason that was made, a little backstory behind Capricorn One, it was made by it was an independent film, highest grossing independent film of that year, by the way. It was made by a CBS studio producer who owned like a like a television studio, who was so irritated by the quality of images that were coming back from NASA during the moon missions mm -hmm. that he said, "Hell." I could make a better production than this. And he wasn't necessarily saying that the moon missions were fake. He just hated the production value. And, well, and, you know, it's hard to do good production when you're in a... <laughs> well, exactly. I mean, if you're gonna, if you're gonna <laughs> fake it, there's only so much you can do. Which, all oh, by the way, was another reason why... If you want the, the big reason... I, I didn't even finish the last one. Why the Russians cannot land on the moon the same time the United States is. It's because then you've got a real continuity problem. Meaning you have two studios that have to sync up exactly <laughs> think about it. think about it. if well, it, i mean sure i mean they, even if they're not in the same place they'd say this they the russians are i don't know 20 miles down range from the americans so you're not gonna be able to see them right the, the 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 surface has to look the same the lighting has to be the same the shadows have to be the same everything has to look the same and well, as you do it in back-to-back -back sets 
Well, yeah, nope. but that's oh, that's. You can do it. It's a global conspiracy, dude. We can do anything. Well, you could, but but what are you going to do? Import Russians <laughs> into wherever you're shooting the sound stage? You, sure. They're, they're not going to agree to that. It's like, look, this is our they're, military the production. There, the, the Russians are up there on the space station, and uh, you know, I heard people. Well, that's not that's not even real. That's you know, they're on green screen, and so they're the Russians are up there green screening it away. Uh, by the way, that's a, that's another point of mine, which is okay. If the Russians, the Americans, are always on the brink of war at all times then why in the world are are the americans lo- supposedly lifting off you know we don't even launch the people from the united sure. states anymore they they, they launch from russia they land they don't even do water lands anymore they land on the ground in russia supposedly Kazakhstan. yeah is why why because they can control the airspace better than well, than we that's can because they have a soyuz spacecraft that uh is the only thing going right now until well the dragon has actually been going up supposedly if you want, if, supposedly because I'm doing it as a courtesy to you, I believe it full heartedly that all this stuff is real. Still, even now, that's okay though. But I, mean, I mean, I, I think we can agree to disagree. No, no, no. I, I don't, very interested in all of this. How about this for for your listeners? How about this? If you want, if you believe in the ISS, look up something. I'll, I'll throw you some easy ones. Look up something called ISS hairspray which is brilliant which is all the women and i because i always it always bugged me to to know when it's like why does anybody with long hair allowed to have long hair in a space station that should be treated like a swimming pool because remember if you're in zero g long hair just breaks off like anything and you know you're going to be running through spider webs plus it's going to clog the filters but what and so i was like all right what do you do with long hair because remember if you're in zero a zero g environment and you're trying to simulate it let's say you're using the uh, the vomit comet to simulate zero g for some of those scenes well there's a problem because women with long hair are going to react the same way like they're in a swimming pool so if they move their hair head to the left their head's going to move first and then their hair is going to follow it's a little different than the water a water. little different a little much, different but much but, denser but it's a much slower response on uh, water very true but think of it this way if you have any sort of jaw jostling any sort of turbulence sure. you're not gonna be able to hide it very well so what do you do with the women okay there's three different production techniques i all i know would be way better than what they were using which is one okay put their hair back in a freaking river band two put a nice flashy nasa hat on them or three, cut their hair short, which is what they've been doing more often than not now. But th- what they decided to do was they decided to perm their hair straight up. And I mean, like, not flowy. Not, I mean, like, straight up, like, Bride of Frankenstein, brittle, you could bounce a ball off of it type of uh, thing. I haven't seen that. Nobody caught it for the longest time. Why would they? Why would you even be looking at such a thing? And we were like, wait, why is their hair not moving <laughs> when they're, you know, they're laying down, their hair is still straight up? It's like, oh, my God, it's permed. They're, they're, it, was, it was amazing. That was just one little thing about the ISS that just drove us to, to no end. There's some fantastic green screen examples uh, we could show you. I mean, the, the best one was, it was done by a guy named uh, Mike Helmick, who caught it. We've been analyzing just about everything they ever had, going back all the way to the to forever. But Mike Helmick did one where now they're using green screen technology where, they, where the guys are actually watching the monitors. They can watch their motions. And a guy was spinning... One of the guys was kind of flipping his hat around, you know, 3G. It's because you want to have little busy effects. And the guy was spinning his hat around, and the other guy who was to his right was trying to grab it, right? And he grabbed the hat, he put it in his other hand, and he put it off to the side, like he was putting it off in a, on, a, on a shelf at the edge of the, of the station. The problem was he missed the hat. The hat was still there, and he went through that in complete arm motion, and then he caught himself on camera. It's like, whoa, 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 what did you just try to grab? The hat's still spinning in free space, and you supposedly put it off to the side there. How does... <laughs> it was, Weird. It was wild to, to see this. And so their tech has gotten better. Now, beforehand, yeah, they were using the Vomit Comet uh, for, for certain effects, but now they're just trying to green screen or blue screen uh, everything. And uh, the... I mean, even the 80s stuff was ridiculous. Uh, the, the Some of the shuttle missions, uh, there's a great shot, of, I don't know if you ever saw it, where um, they're, uh, the Challenger people, with the, they had a still shot, and I thought all their helmets, they, they were sitting you know, in their NASA uniforms, and they, were, they had these helmets in front of them. I was going, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. There's motorcycle helmets. What, they, they weren't going to use the real helmets because they were too weird or they were part of a spacesuit, and, and so they're just using these kind of like photo op helmets. Hmm. I'm going, okay. But then I watched one of the the mission stuff. Granted, this is VHS, it's low res, but it was easy to spot. 
they're wearing the same freaking motorcycle helmets with short sleeve shirts and and no gloves it was like bare arms it was like they're wearing engineer shirts i was going okay one why are you wearing the helmets in the first place if you're not wearing a freaking space suit that kind of defeats the purpose plus you could actually see their bare necks underneath the uh, b- below the helmet line i'm going oh so the helmets are completely for display and again we believe sorry not to get off on a rant but we sure. believe here, here's the, one of the underlying things and why it's it's easy for us to get this message across is that we believe science science gets a pass especially nasa because they are really the the, the front men they're the the lead singers of science which is they wear white uniforms they don't carry guns they smile for the camera they're totally legit and we gave them a pass for the longest time and now when we've been revisiting all their work now we start seeing flaws and and the more we look the more flaws we see and once you find the first one well then that makes you suspicious of everything else and we've been digging into it sorry well no no i mean that makes that makes total sense let's um Let's uh, wrap this up. I want you to kind of explain to the listeners mm-hmm. what, how the flat Earth kind of works. I mean, how... Oh, how it looks in the whole... Work? Well, how, how, like, the sun and the moon, if it's not that far away, and how come, you know, like, if you're in Australia, well, the moon's upside down. You see the, you know, the... Uh, Got it. See tranquility, it's in the wrong spot. Well, okay. I mean, how does that work? How, what? how, let me, how let me... does it work in the, in the flat Earth model? Got it. All right. Let me break down the, the Flat Earth model real quick for anyone. that I know it's radio, so people are going to have to visualize. Think of Flat Earth. If you want to think of it as a snow globe, that's fine. Some people said a pizza box. Some people have said, you know, like a shallow sports stadium is what we're talking about here. If you, and I know it dates me, and there's lots of people that have not been to Planet. If you've never been to a planetarium, you really should go to kind of get sort of what we're talking about here. Because that's what we're talking about. Whereas if you took a planetarium and you took all the seats out of it, and you still left the display system up above and then put on the ground where, you know, put where, you know, continents and water and on the outside edge would be, you know, the edge of this structure. Because that's what we're talking about. You're right. not a spinning ball. You're in a giant building. That's really what we're talking about here. Up above you is a massive. So is this, this building is not moving at all. Are we this moving? building is not moving at all. It okay. is it is fixed. It is stationary. And I'm not going to use chapter and verse on you. If you guys are strong gotcha. Christians, you can go to testingtheglobe.com and there's plenty of that there. And that's not my site. But you're talking about a, a, a fixed planetarium structure that is way more advanced than what we have now. Meaning just about everything in the sky you see is part of a display that mean the stars that being to a lesser degree in the sun and the moon all the sun and moon are very special objects because the sun is and the moon are not 93 million miles away and 237,000 miles away respectively they are both inside this structure both about the same size less than 50 miles wide very very small by comparison and they move over the top of this thing like a mobile over a child's crib are they part of a multiple display system probably because even though there's some people that say that the stars you know you clockwise versus counterclockwise at the equator some people don't believe in that i do because i've done the, the software thing for a long time and i know what we can do with instancing and programming and it's if the structure is big enough you can do multiple display systems it's not very difficult at all but again if you're not into that it's kind of tough to visualize the every but it is an enclosed pressurized system which also answers another big question which is how does the immense power of the vacuum of space not tear off the atmosphere completely and people say well gravity and gravity seems to be the magical science explanation for just about everything we come up with they say well it's got to be gravity because if it wasn't gravity the atmosphere would be gone it's like well unless it's an enclosed system it's like well yeah but it's not that it's like okay so, but that's what we're talking about here. Uh, a big enclosed system, big projection systems on the top. The stars are just lights. Uh, the planets are just lights. Even though they look spherical, people say, well, you know, you're, you're saying, you know, I've looked through my telescope and, and Jupiter is a sphere. I'm going, take binoculars to a planetarium. Does Jupiter look like a sphere through your binoculars? And, and they'll say, well, yeah, but that doesn't make any difference because you're in a planetarium. I'm going, who's to say when you don't walk out the doors, you just walk into a much bigger one. <laughs> Right, because that's what we're talking about here. It's right. and I know that it, for a lot of people, it it 
they think it's it, look everybody hates this because of the globe conditioning you everything else in science there's things you can test right now you know fire uh, burns look and, that's you just you just you know you said things you can test yeah. well um you know if the earth was a flat surface mm -hmm. uh why can't you get up on a high mountain yeah. high mountain somewhere and uh, get a telescope and see across the other side of the planet Perfect. because i yeah. is capable of seeing much further past the horizon and i know that some of my uh, my com comrades have said all oh, comrades i say that it sounds russian it's not russian the um if because when people say it, hey if you're in san francisco and you have a powerful enough telescope why can't you see japan from san francisco why? Well, not no, not uh, that extreme. Okay, you know, okay, uh, extreme. We'll Say, take it back. The point is the reason why you can't you can see very very far, but remember, you're not looking through a vacuum. If it was a vacuum, you would be able to see very 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 far. But remember, what you're breathing right now is only twenty percent oxygen, and the rest is eighty percent nitrogen. And I know some trace gases, but people like it simple. So eighty twenty, which so means you're saying light refraction through to through through oxygen in the uh, atmosphere i'm sorry what? you can't see you're saying light refraction is the reason you can't see that. not necessarily light well some light refraction i'm just saying that remember what we're breathing is just kind of a thin version of water how far can you see through water not that far i mean yeah you can see long distance photography caps out mountain to mountain i think world record photography is something like 300 miles which is a long long way in fact we've used that as some of our examples meaning Eight inches. If you again, I know you want to wrap up the thing, but eight inches, no, eight no, inches, eight no. inches per mile square. You want to, you guys want to prove this to yourself? The the easiest way is to go down to a body of water because we we'd love to use the salt flats, but science will just come back and say no, it's just a really flat place on on a on a sphere. It's like really because there's nine states in the United States that are ninety nine point nine nine percent flat, but whatever. So go to a body of water look across to some other distant point across a body of water and tell me what you can see because remember eight inches per mile squared adds up really really quickly to where even at 50 miles you're talking almost 1700 feet of curvature right. you should not be able to see those objects and we're not talking about superior mirages or inferior mirages they're as clear as day but time lapse non time lapse video still shots they're right. there to where tell me why we can see these objects we well you, you bring up interesting point i th that brings me to something i want to ask you and i forgot about it what what do you think about this uh mad uh oh the mad mike mad mike uh hughes what do you think about his project do you think that's ever gonna I oh mean, yeah I, yeah yeah he's he's still he's still, not, he's still gunning for it he's trying to and i don't blame him for being cautious after the last one he did because i mean and I, and I offered i put the word out there i said look if he needs a replacement if he wants me to jump in there at the last minute i will gladly go up in that thing just to, just just to, i know it's probably dangerous it is a junkyard no, rocket it's steam powered i know i know i know but the the point is this he's it's not is it proving the 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 earth is flat or the earth is a globe no of course it's not it is just he's not he's not even getting up a couple thousand feet it's going well, up really really fast and i'm sure the g-forces aren't well i think this one he said it was not uh to this one was not to take pictures this one was to i guess to raise awareness and awareness yeah yeah the, and then the, for the second one was to uh oh, 1.2 million to raise for a giant rocket and i thought well why couldn't he just go cheaper and somebody donate 10,000 bucks and he goes up in a MiG-29 up into the you know the edge of space and uh, takes some pictures well that's actually not terrible um the, actually I think the second one he was going to go up he was going I, I think the second one was way more dangerous than the first one where he was supposedly going to take that same sort of rocket and have it hoisted up on a giant weather balloon up to about 120,000 feet and then light it off Oh I know, and I'm thinking that that's got that's got doom written all over. In fact, you might want to stencil that on the side of the rocket. Well, cause... it just worries me when somebody says, "I don't believe in science," I but I know how things work. <laughs> yeah. Let's build a rocket. I don't. I believe in science. I love science. I, well, I, I, I know you do, but that's that was his quote. I mean, yeah. that's a quote from him, and I, I I wish him all the best. I don't wish him any ill will at all. I, I I think it's very cool. I actually wanted to do an interview with him, but I think he's busy. He's been pretty busy. Let's put it this way: it was the the money that we spent to help him finish just even this launch has given so much exposure. I mean, honestly, we wasn't sure. given us that much exposure until some journalist wrote 
he used these four words inside his tag, which was <laughs> f- uh, f- Rocket Man Flat Earth, somewhere along those lines. And then right. just about everybody repeated some sure. variation of that. It was, it was everywhere that, like in the next three days. Was, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. We couldn't, you, you couldn't put a price tag on, on that right. sort of exposure. Right. Uh, is he going to prove anything? No, but at the same time, I love the awareness thing, and I hope he, you know, hope he, whatever he does, if he does something before the Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, I'm just in anybody's corner named Mad Mike Hughes, okay? You know, <laughs> Mad, you know, Mad Mike, come on. Well, you know how it goes, though. I mean, in the in the journalism world, if <laughs> if he if he makes it, hey, great, you know, fantastic. If he doesn't make it, right. That's where it gets kind of interesting because do the, does the press just run it as you know flat Earth you know falls flat blah 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 or well, or do they try thing. to make it more sinister? It's like did flat Earth push this mad man to the edge of edge of madness? Who knows? I, I don't know. I don't know if it'd go that deep. I, I mean, hope so, not. I think maybe Fox News would. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. I don't, I don't know, man. It's it's all it's all insane nowadays. Yeah. Well, dude, man, I really appreciate you taking the time and uh, kind of explaining things to oh, us. Yeah. yeah, happy to do uh, it. Us, us non flat earthers <laughs> trying to get a, a grip on what's going on. So we're only mostly crazy. Well, you know, hey, crazy as you know as crazy does. So yeah. you don't seem too crazy. <laughs> Thanks for a scrump reference. That's good. <laughs> That's right. Well, man, uh, like I said, do you got any anything coming up where you want to plug? Uh, uh, any- sure. I do. I do. Sure. I do my own radio show on Tuesday nights called on True Frequency Radio. Just check it out. It's called Strange World. And my YouTube channel. In fact, don't even worry about my YouTube channel. Just type in. If you go into YouTube or even Google, just type in Flat Earth Clues you will get to the right place. There's just so much content out there. Don't feel like you're overwhelmed. A lot to digest, but uh, you'll you'll have fun. Sure. Yeah. Right on, man. Well, I appreciate you taking the time, like I said, and uh, I advise everybody to go check out his uh, videos and uh, see what you think. <laughs>